How's it going star seekers? I hope you're all doing all right and keeping safe and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos, a roguelite action adventure game where up to four players can band together and embark upon a mission to take down the titans, ancient beings who have unleashed the minions on the once peaceful land of Tassos. With an expansive overworld map to explore, procedurally generated dungeons, a selection of classes to choose from, and many other quests, secret areas and collectibles to keep you busy, Rogue Heroes has a good amount of content to offer, but how does it compare to other great roguelikes and roguelites which have released in recent months? In this in-depth review, I'm going to be covering off what you can expect from the game, which should hopefully help you decide whether or not it's worth your hard-earned cash. So Rogue Heroes begins with you creating a character, though customization options are pretty limited, and this basically boils down to you selecting your skin, hair and clothing colours. Following this, we're treated to an introductory cutscene featuring some pretty looking stained glass windows bearing images that depict the events which have led up to the present day. Now Rogue Heroes doesn't put a lot of emphasis on its storyline, which is a bit of a shame in my opinion, and this introduction is about as deep as things get. Basically, in ancient times, four goddesses sacrificed themselves to seal away four great titans, which over time were forgotten about. Explorers then discovered Tassos, disturbed the balance of things, and the titans awoke once more, weakening the seals of the dungeons, which allowed them to release the minions on the land. It's now our job to venture into each dungeon and defeat the titans to seal them away once more. Now I said in my previous review of Undermine that I felt several of its mechanics were influenced by The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, however Rogue Heroes literally is A Link to the Past in roguelite form. As you get to play in the game and venture through its world, you'll notice that many of the items and tools that you use, the enemies you face and the puzzles that you solve are near identical to those found in A Link to the Past and to me this isn't a bad thing considering it's my favourite Zelda game of all time and I've been waiting forever for a remake. Despite these similarities though, Rogue Heroes still has plenty of other tricks up its sleeve although some of them also share similarities with other great games. So once we've got through the intro, in a rather familiar fashion, we wake in a bed in an empty looking house. And upon venturing outside, some beardy fella called Griff collars us and tells us he's a builder. Now Griff is wanting to rebuild the long abandoned Intori village in which we now find ourselves. But in order to do this, he needs some gems. And for some reason, it's up to us to get them for him. As our luck would have it, these precious gems just so happen to be found within the Titan's dungeons, and so Griff points us in the direction of the nearest dungeon and off we pop. Now controls in Rogue Heroes are pretty straightforward. We move our character with the left analog stick or D-pad, swing our sword by hitting Y, and can interact with stuff by pressing A. Each character class in the game comes with their own unique ability performed by pressing B, and these are generally used as evasive manoeuvres, though a few of them do offer offensive capabilities. Now as you progress through the game, you'll start to accumulate a lot of different active items, and these include things like bombs, which can be used to damage enemies, as well as open up secret areas, a hook shot used to traverse across gaps or gather items at a distance, and a boomerang which can temporarily stun opponents. Aside from going into the inventory menu though, the only way to select a particular item is by cycling through them all with the L and R buttons, which does become a bit problematic once you've built up a bit of a collection. So after working your way past a bunch of slimes and some angry goats, you'll eventually reach the first dungeon. Nearby, a handy teleporter will activate, and these quick travel portals are scattered across Tassos, linking back to your hometown, saving you some legwork on future ventures. Now each time you enter one of the main dungeons, any gems you're carrying will be sacrificed, and the procedurally generated dungeons in Rogue Heroes bear all the hallmarks of classic Zelda dungeons, so if you've ever played a Zelda game, you'll sort of know what to expect. Dungeon layouts are constructed using rooms selected from a pool of rooms, while its monsters are generally taken from the areas surrounding the dungeon, with a couple of dungeon-specific unique enemies thrown in for good measure. The vast majority of rooms you'll come across will contain a bunch of enemies for you to dispatch, as well as some minor puzzle elements, which usually involve lighting sets of torches, pulling switches or pushing blocks onto floor buttons, after which you'll get a nice little chest containing some goodies. 
From my experience, the majority of the puzzles in the game are generally very easy, though you will on occasion encounter the odd puzzle requiring a little bit more brain work. In addition to enemies and puzzles, dungeons also contain plenty of traps designed to catch you out. While a lot of these are pretty obvious, coming in the form of spikes or flaming floor panels, the slightly off-coloured floor triggers for traps can be hard to spot, and triggering just one of these led to my demise on multiple occasions. Now each of the Titan's dungeons contains three floors, and after beating a floor you can then pay gems to open up optional shortcuts, allowing you to skip the first two floors in future attempts. Upon reaching the third floor, you then need to retrieve the boss room key from a big chest found within a puzzle room, but the solution to the puzzle is always the same, which does become a little tedious after a few runs of the dungeon. Overall, I thought Rogue Hero's procedural dungeon generation was decent, though it didn't quite offer as much variety as other roguelites I've played. I encountered the same room layouts in multiple dungeons, albeit with a palette swap and different enemies, and this was frequent enough for me to notice, but there was enough variety for me not to mind too much. Now when it comes to the game's bosses, once more they have that classic Zelda simplicity to them, though I was a little disappointed to see that they didn't incorporate the use of specific items to beat them, and overall, I actually found getting to the bosses was harder than the boss fights themselves. On each new floor and in each new dungeon, enemy health and damage is increased which keeps things pretty challenging, so one of the main gameplay loops involves you attempting dungeons and getting slaughtered by more powerful enemies, earning gems in the process which can then be used to upgrade your character's stats. Now instead of simply using gems to upgrade your stats and abilities from a character menu, you first have to get grip to construct buildings on plots of lands within Intori Village, and there's a wide selection of buildings which can be constructed in any order, each offering their own unique services. These include things like the Health Center, where gems are spent on skill trees to upgrade your character's health and magic attributes, the Blacksmith, where you can increase your melee attributes such as damage, attack speed and attack range, and the Tool Shop, where you can improve most of your active items. To unlock new classes, you first need to build the Tailor's Shop, whose owner requires special threads to create new costumes, which can then be equipped from the wardrobe in your house to switch to a specific character class. In addition to the unique abilities, each character also has slightly different stat allocations and specialises in a specific style of combat allowing for different builds. The Mage class for instance does increase damage with the wand and the Ranger is better with the bow, but I found that initially you will spend most of your time in melee combat, at least until you've earned enough gems to make another specialisation worthwhile. I was actually pretty surprised at how many different skill trees there were to upgrade in the game, and owing to the fact that your gem cost increases for each point you put into a skill, it will undoubtedly take many hours worth of gem grinding to max out your character's skills and attributes. Now I've spoken about your overall objective within Rogue Heroes, that being to defeat all the Titans and retrieve the seals, but in addition to this, there are plenty of other things to keep you occupied. To start with, the residents of Intori Village are a needy bunch with plenty of optional quests for you to embark on, and you're also able to build new houses, which can then be occupied by NPCs found out in the wide world. Taking a leaf out of Stardew Valley's book, you're also able to construct a farm in your town to grow crops in, which can then be sold at the town's market stall for gold coin. In turn, these can be spent on new furnishings to customise your house with, which by the way can also be upgraded to increase its size. Finally, Rogue Heroes Overworld also contains plenty of optional locations for you to explore, each containing secrets and hidden collectibles for you to find, as well as several optional dungeons offering their own challenges and rewards. Now, from its gameplay mechanics and the way in which you progress through the game, to me Rogue Heroes was primarily designed with single player in mind. You do, however, have the option of tackling the game's content with up to three other players, either locally offline or online, but unfortunately at the time of writing this review, the online servers are not yet up and running. Going by local co-op mode though, it's easy to hop into another player's game, and although the game will continue with a host's progress, you can complete objectives and quests for each player in the game. Now I can see 4 player co-op being a lot of fun, though considering Nintendo's track record when it comes to its online player base, unless you have a bunch of friends who also bought the game, I wouldn't count on still finding online lobbies for it even just a few months after release. 
So I've already mentioned the item swapping problem, but aside from that, there were a few other minor issues I encountered with the game. Firstly, while you can upgrade your melee attack range, I did find myself frequently walking into enemies when trying to attack them, and I think that they need to tone down the damage from collisions with enemies as it currently does far too much damage. I also encountered a few soft locks whilst playing, one of which occurred just after I beat a boss, but I have been in touch with a publisher, and they've confirmed that a day one patch should fix this as well as a progression bug which temporarily halted my progress. That was of course until I discovered some cheeky little exploits allowing me to travel out of bounds and walk on water like David Blaine which will no doubt be of use to anyone wanting to speedrun the game. Finally, to touch on the visuals and audio of the game, visually I really liked the sprite work and environments in Rogue Heroes. There were plenty of vibrant colour palettes used, and as with the rest of the game it's clear that the visual aesthetics were heavily influenced by A Link to the Past, which I for one have no complaints about. Audio wise, the sound effects were decent, and the game's soundtrack was wonderfully reminiscent of the SNES era, whilst benefiting from modern hardware and enhanced audio techniques. Overall, I personally thought Rogue Heroes was a pretty great game. It has plenty of content, which I reckon will easily offer around 20 hours of gameplay, but being a roguelite, it doesn't offer the same amount of replayability as roguelike games such as Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon, so that's something to consider when picking up Rogue Heroes. When it comes to a rating, I'm going to be giving Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos. 4 out of 5 stars. I had a great time playing Rogue Heroes and it's going to be one of those few games that I'm going to jump back into now I'm done reviewing it. If you like games like Moonlighter, Sword of Ditto or classic Zelda games then I highly recommend giving Rogue Heroes a go. You can get the game from the UK Switch eShop for £15.99 or from the US eShop for $19.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And that just about wraps up this in-depth review of Rogue Heroes. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I upload new reviews for Nintendo Switch games every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.